Did you end up getting signed uh, WWE? That was was that 2007 then? It was 2007. I uh, the funny thing, funny thing was 06. I was getting kind of courted by them. Uh, Ted DiBiase will never remember this, but he his boys started down at that point. Teddy and uh, Mike, and they started training for Harley, and I was helping train them a bit. Uh, break in. Harley would have me come in and he wanted me to help him work out their first match and stuff like this. Well, Teddy saw me and he was an agent at the time. He started pushing for me. And so 06 was about the point where I was at the peak of working, you know, I was about as good as I can get without. You'd been in about a decade by then, had you? I mean, about 10 years. Oh yeah. That by that point, uh, 91. So 14, 15 years. Oh, nice. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. So I had already, and I was, I was, I owned the gym. I bought Harley's gym. So I was down there right next door to his school all the time. And, uh, all that year of wrestling and everything I could do didn't matter. I remember standing next to Benoit being bigger than him. You know, they made all those guys. Like I just remember standing there looking at Benoit and except for his weird neck, I was like, I'm bigger than Benoit. Like, okay. So that tells me I'm big enough for this. Yeah. And, uh, nothing happened. And then Oh seven, I get a call from Nova to play Donald Trump and, <laughs> and wrestle as Donald Trump as a spoof in St. Louis. And that's what got me a contract uh, out of everything wow. that I, I, I could possibly do. All the you, technical wrestling I could do. Any idea why you were picked for that? Like, um, Nova knew me. Uh, Nova knew me for a long time, uh, Mike Bucci. And he had just been down to Harley's for one of Harley's long camps that he does. So he and I were in constant contact. And I think he just knew – I'm not going to – he didn't owe me anything. No one – well, first of all, no one owes you jack shit in this business, right? <laughs> he didn't owe me anything. But he knew I was in the area, and he wanted to give me a chance. And he knew I could pull – like, he just had a feeling I could pull it off. So that's really all I know. So that's what got you the contract? 100%. That's what got me the contract. Like, I went out, did it, and the chick I worked was not a good worker. Like, uh, she was a sweetheart. She was a sweetheart, but she had to write down three turnbuckles to the head. Not like, I'm like, come on, really? And uh, at the end of it, and the crowd's chanting, we want wrestling. And I'm like, oh, this is where my career's gone. There was a, <laughs> there was an ice cream cake ringside, and she stuck her head through. And, man, I waffled her with that cake. You should go back and listen to it, man. It was a, it was a smack. I was like, I'm, I'm making something out of this. Bam! She took the bump. I gave her like a, a little flying headbutt. One, two, three. One night bonus from Vince. Vince loved it. And then a week later, I got a call that I got hired. I was like, really? Oh, the next night, again, to put in perspective, I'm kind of winding down wrestling. So I owned a gym, but I've let the I didn't let the body go, but I let the size go. So I'm slimming down. I'm still in good shape, but I'm not even tan. I'm supposed to be Donald Trump. I don't give a shit. The next night, somebody comes up to me and says, hey, Vince wants to see you in the dark. And I went, what? They said, oh, Vince shit. wants to see you in the dark. I'm like, luckily, I had a can of spray tan, you know, <laughs> sprayed it all over me. I teamed with Funaki. I was Scotty Too Hotty for a night. He had been out injured. So it was usually him and Funaki together. I teamed with Funaki. I got the hot tag, hit a couple of things. They hit the finish on me, one, two, three. Again, a week later, I get a call. Like, so weird how the business works, right? Like, just, you never know when shit's going to happen. That's wild, man. So did the uh, chick ever say anything to you about? Uh... Not a thing. Not no. a thing. Never saw her again. I hear she came <laughs> from the Carolinas. Like I said, it was a sweet gal. She looked a lot more like Rosie O'Donnell than I looked like Trump at the time. So I, just I remember that watching hair. that. I remember watching that on TV <laughs> when it happened, man. I thought that was awesome. That was great. <laughs> and I just kept thinking, well, it's be a hell of a payday. And uh, nope, it was a hell of a one night payday. I'll tell you that. It was good. What was the deal when uh, Eugene cut your hair or whatever? What was that? Another random spot because I was down for Harley. I was, you know, again, I lived in Har in Harley's area in this territory. So at that point, I was booked out on, you know, he just looked at me, you want to go work for New York? And I'm like, yeah, sure, boss. So um, I'd go up and Harley was, at, where the hell was he? He was somewhere I couldn't talk to him. I think he was actually in Japan at that time doing an appearance. And that's the one where ugh, I was booked with a bunch of bald guys. Like, no one knew this was happening. I was oh, just yeah. an extra. But I'm the only one that had the hair. I still had the long blonde hair. And Johnny Ace comes up. He's like, oh. 
you uh you, you want to get a make an extra 250 for a haircut and i go he goes looks like you could use a haircut you know and i'm looking at johnny ace going you're the fucking surfer guy but i'm like <laughs> like you're telling me i need a haircut but uh i thought about it i said shit i don't you know it's good money i'm already making 250 you'll give me an extra two so 500 dollars for a haircut and that's what i'm doing tonight all right whatever you know and uh that's because I got like, again, I got booked with a lot of short hair or bald guys. I can't remember it. I just feels like everybody was bald and I'm the only one that had had hair. I had known Regal already, um, had a rapport with him. And he goes, Ace, Ace, don't let him, you're going to let him cut your hair. Is that your thing? And I'm like, yeah, but I don't want to do Harley wrong. You know, like I don't want to do anything wrong to his name. They asked me to do it. I'm booked. So that's basically what it was. The other two guys were, pl- I was the only plant. The other two guys were Mark's. They were pulled from the crowd. Oh, really? So, yeah. So they they set me up. They gave me a ticket, and they're like, "Go out there when the show begins, and just go sit there and wait for the segment, and then you'll be you'll be one of the ones picked. Like, raise your hand or whatever." So I sit there, and I'm like, "Fuck, I'm gonna lose my hair." Like, here it goes. Like I've been, you know. So I went up, grabbed a couple beers, sat down, and I just chugged some beers. I was like, "Up, oh, here comes the big haircut." Well, I had so much shit in my hair, Eugene Dinsmore couldn't get through it, but. uh and then I took the kick from Bischoff at the end because that's that was the setup, you know. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. But the two guys that were not the plants, they believed it because Dinsmore was working the gimmick in back. He's like, um, um, he's doing the thing, yeah. and they're like, he walked away, and and Regal was playing it too. He's like, uh, let's go this way, Eugene. Come here, come come this way, and and Eugene's like, eh, he's doing the gimmick, and the two guys were like, man. I didn't know he was really like that. And I'm like, fucking people believe this. I'm like, this is amazing. That's yeah, awesome. Somebody believes. Yeah, it was good. <laughs> watch. I said, watch, 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 watch. Watch yeah. this next video Big that's coming up on your screen. Remember now, so watch it. That I can't get this shit closed.